Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are today listening to this uh, blogcast, podcast, I don't even know what to call them, some got the other, aren't they? Anyway, what I did was I put a little portfolio together, had a, a mess around. Now this is a, a draft portfolio. I would never consider this one to be sort of like my final portfolio if I was putting it in. It was just a, a draft portfolio that I was trying the other day. Um, what day were we on now? Friday? Yesterday. I was uh, messing around with it um, yesterday, putting something to it together, just uh, having a look. Now, uh, let's uh, just clarify the uh, what we're going to be handing in. We're going to be handing in 11 Im images so that'll be 10 images for the portfolio and your front cover and I still expect the front cover to be a leading lines image and then I will want the images after that to follow in the way that they are laid down in the brief so your leading lines, we start off with your leading lines and then whichever one comes next. So that makes it easier for my marking sheet, the way that my marking sheet is laid out. Now, obviously, if you have to um, duplicate on a, on a theme, then that, that's OK. I, I will understand that. But where possible, please try and... Uh, follow how they are set out in the uh, in the brief because it just makes life a lot more easier for me so you're going to have uh, 11 images in total one front cover 10 images in the portfolio and plus you will need to have the reflection piece as well which i think off the top of my head i think it's about 700 words isn't it about 700 words i can't can't remember. I will confirm that in an email. So you need that as well. Now, how you want to put the the uh, the portfolio together is entirely up to you. Whether you want to use PowerPoint, Keynote, Word document, Pages document, how you want to lay it out is entirely up to you. What I need at the end of the day is a PDF. So whatever you use is fine as long as it comes to me as a PDF. That's what I need. Okay. And just remember as well how I want the title to be as well. So that um, your name and your student ID within the, the title, that's what we need so that we can just then uh, mark it quite easily. So I only used a small area for doing my portfolio um, pictures. actually limited myself narrowed down what I was uh, was doing in terms of the the places that I was uh, photographing so all I did all I used was my my desk and I'll show you that now so here was the the area that I was photographing in was the uh, just round my desk so round my desk and about six foot either side well i can't say either side because there's a, a wall one side in the window but about six foot um six foot do you understand six foot that's two meters for those who are still not in pounds shillings and pence that's uh two meters so yeah so i was kind of like working around that area and this is uh my now my desk at home so that uh i'm recording stuff for yourselves and recording stuff for the um the MSCs here so this is how I'm working but this was the area I chose just to limit myself into and uh, photograph stuff in and around this area I'm going to do another one where I make it a bit wider but obviously I'm going to be sort of like concentrating just in the in the home at the moment for the reason that we're being stuck indoors so seeing how I can do portfolios inside and maybe give you some insight into those as well now the images i'm going to show you aren't aren't perfect like i say this is just a a draft this is just a, an idea 
to um, get me going to see what I can, how I can progress, how I can do things differently. And it's not until you start taking pictures and laying them down in the portfolio that you start thinking, well, does that work? Doesn't that work? And you can move from, uh, from there. So, yeah, so uh, what I used, I even sort of like um, narrowed down my choices even more. So I was making it quite difficult for myself to see how well it can be done. I, I, I think I've done reasonably well with it. But what I used was this, there's this camera here, which is the, the Fuji um, X100F. And that was just the camera that I was using, just this, this one here and it's got a fixed lens on it so it was a uh, 35 mil on the fixed length and the, and the reason why i just used this particular camera okay was to give me some kind of crossover between um a compact camera a digital slr and an iphone kind of photography because i thought with this camera here you know like your iphone you've only got one focal length and that's all you can work with so that's what i wanted to try was just to try that one focal length and see how well it did um work and how what images that i could get from it in this very um isolated oh my pen's gone kind of crazy hang on a minute try again yeah just to work within this uh this fixed area of my desk area and just a little bit more that way as well to see what I could get so what I did was this this image here okay is going to be my framing image this is the image I, I liked for um, to do the framing for And so here's the frames. Okay, framing subjects. So there's my frames. And um, the way that I've edited it is that um, I like kind of like 1970s color or black and white, but let me say that I want you to photograph in that way or, or work that way because everybody's style. Is completely different and i'm going to leave that style of how you do it entirely up to you this is you know your your um your portfolio how you want to present it your style is is uh completely up to you as long as it's not ridiculous i mean if you if you want to use a certain way of styling then then let me have a look at um the way that you want to do it and we'll give you advice from from that so yeah so this is quite a simple shot it's my uh bookshelves and i just uh like the way that the, the shelf is actually framing my cameras and my books and uh, my oddities. I have this uh, collection of milk jugs. I've got a fascination with uh, little milk jugs. So that's what I go and do. So that's that one. So that one was framing. This one here is a uh, one called grouping. This is the grouping shot. I don't particularly like this this one. I had a, uh, I thought I saw my hard drives, and I thought that make a good good one. And it's not to actually take the uh, the picture. Sometimes you think no, that's rubbish. That's absolutely <laughs> bloody rubbish. I'm just uh, I'm really not happy with it. The the lights was um was getting very low. Okay, so I. Put the amateur, ap put the aperture, sorry, at uh, 2 f2, and you can see there's hardly any uh, focusing. Like, well, this is where our, our focusing was. I like the idea of them all stacked together, and this is how they actually you know, sit on my desk most of the time. I've got these rugged hard drives that I use, and they, they, I've got um, three of the orange ones and, and this grey one. And usually they just stack together in front of me, me Mac. So I actually liked them. Well, <clears throat> what I liked about the when I first saw the shot was these these leading lines coming into the uh, the subject. 
but I haven't got really the composition. I didn't want to move things around on the table. I suppose I should have done really, but I, I just wanted to to leave them as they are. Try to to uh, photograph a, a natural, you know, environment as it is the, the area that I work in. So I'm just trying to do that. That's what I was my my aim was, but. This leading line here, okay, I don't think it's as strong as those leading lines. So I think what I needed to do was move these hard drives over here. So we had these strong leading lines coming into where the position then of the, the hard drives was. And now obviously, instead of having this, uh, um, you know, F2, what I should have done, disappear, is I should have put, you know, the camera down there. I should have had to put the camera on the table, okay, and just left it there, put it onto timer, and then maybe open up the aperture to f8. So then the depth, the depth within the image would have been actually greater. So there would have been more here, and this more this would have been in focus. So that's what I should have done. I didn't, but I should have done. So I'm going to have to just uh, take a hit on that one. And uh, and move move on from it. Oh, so this one here, okay, this would be <clears throat> what I considered for my uh, my leading lines, right? And uh, I kind of went a little bit off piste on this one. So I said that uh, I used the the camera, this this particular camera. This particular camera on all of the shots I did, but I did apart from obviously this one, and this was the only one I didn't. But the reason why I I used the camera, okay, was I like this this red strap. I really do like this red strap. It's one of my favourite things. Silly that, isn't it? A <laughs> red strap being one of your favourite things, but it it is. And uh, so I used uh, if I go back. Um, go back. What I actually used was uh, to do this particular shot. I used this camera here, but the focal length on this one is exactly the same on that one. So I kept the uh, focal length at thirty-five mil. So I didn't, you know, um, change what the focal length I was using. I just changed the camera. But we we'll go back. I just I really liked the red stripe coming into the black and against the uh, the wooden material these are these are drop back down boards that um, I, I keep what a drop down board is, is is you know you can get any kind of material uh, so I use like um, tiles big tiles those big industrial tiles I, I've got quite a lot of them I've got wooden boards that I make together, bread boards, or any kind, just to give you a different kind of uh, background. And these, these, uh, these are old um, wooden floorboards that um, somebody was throwing out. So I got these wooden floorboards, and I've, I've put a baton under. I'm digressing. I'm telling you rubbish, really. At the end of the... anyway, they're drop down boards, what we call, so that you can play place uh, stuff onto them. So I deliberately. Um, put the the camera into this corner okay because i wanted a leading line coming round going and taking you back off in that direction so that was what my purpose of the composition was was to create a flow within the image and take you back off in a different direction so then i gave myself small little areas here that then i can actually place the uh the text onto the written information onto there so the university of nottingham logo your name my name and all the rest of the material that needs to go on there so i've given myself little places that i can drop so little sections of area so not everything is clumped together so actually i did actually think about this deliberately i placed this deliberately i wanted the, the line coming in from there and i wanted to go out there okay and i wanted this line here to run down with where the the um the strap overlay so i do i have deliberately laid this out purposely so then you know i was what i was thinking was putting my my university of nottingham logo 
up into this corner and then down in this area here having sort of like the the bulk of the information that i want and then maybe just some little bit of information there. It's maybe my name and your name and so on and all the rest of it so that's why you know i've deliberately done it in this way so i go back i like this one so whoa steady on doing the wrong uh, wrong thing so i like this one i think i would keep that one Still getting used to this piece of software i don't like this one so i'm going to take that one out of the uh the frame i like this one so i'm going to keep that one all right so i've got this one here this is me uh Sorry, just having a cup of tea. This is my negative space one. This is what I was looking for in terms of the, the negative space. And what I like this, I, it's an all right image. It's not, not too bad. Yeah. But um, I've got um, Fuji cameras, I've got Panasonic cameras, and I've got camera ca Canon cameras, and I've got Sony cameras, and I use them all, all for, for different, different uh, jobs that I, I have to do. But I've got these uh, Canon batteries and I was just actually uh, charging them up for uh, so they're ready for the Canon camera, Canon, sorry, the Canon camera, because I was going to be doing something with them. And what I didn't sort out properly, OK, it's not it's not bad for it being a grouping image, you know, there, there's three which you know we're asking for we're kind of asking for that's a dodgy looking three three you know or five to be in the uh the image so that's like you're grouping an odd number three or five we might go to seven but i think nine is, is far too many but if i was to do this 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 image so i'm going to go half a tick and half a cross on this one right if we was to do this image again what i would do is first of all make sure right, all these little bits of dust are gone it's nice and clean all right keep it nice and clean so this originally here is a white tile big one those big massive tiles that i've just uh, placed these three batteries on and i've got window light coming in from this direction and i had it on a very small um, fold down table that um, I use so that's how I got it set up so I've got window light like I said coming in from here that's my main light source and I had a little bit of white material just reflecting a small amount of light back in just a small amount I didn't want too much but that's the lighting setup I've got but when I do this one again what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that word Canon there right and you'll see an arrow there I'm going to make sure that on these particular batteries here they all go in the same direction I'm not saying for you to do that I'm just saying for me to make the shot better for me that's what I wanted and uh, this one here says something different from this one and this one so again i would make sure that i would use the same kind of batteries it just gives that uniform look to the the actual images and just makes them work a little bit better so i'd have them all so that were canon and the arrow again in the same direction i like the um how they are it, it doesn't look staged on the uh in the image they're just three batteries just put together but i just you know for my own little bits and pieces that's kind of like what i would like to do so this one here this is my uh pattern shot and uh this is you know 
this one here, this one here helps the balance. So like this part of the, the pattern and then I like the actual natural kind of pattern what's going on it as well. So I've got a bit of a natural pattern and a man-made pattern happening. So again, it was just a a little little kind of natural shot that I've done. And again, I what I did is um, I processed these these images, all of these images in uh, Lightroom. So that's what I used for it. Okay, and then I use a a plugin called Color Effects 4, I think it is, and the what we we get here is I've used a, a cross processing um cross processing so back in the old days what we used to do is we used to put one type of film through the wrong kind of uh chemicals so it'd give you this colour shift to your to your images and that was one thing that I used to do and I still like you know the the colours that it, it gives so again maybe have a look at the um your style that you can uh can do. I know for things like in Snapseed, if you're using Snapseed to to edit your images and so on, I know that you can do various things in there, and it's all different kinds of plugins for different things. So, I mean, if if you want to use a particular kind of style, like I say, like send me an image, let me have a look at it. As long as you're not going too far with the the processing, then I, I'm quite happy with that. But the things I don't like about this particular image here is, you know, I'm a sucker for these these kind of like straight lines, getting them level. And so obviously this box is uh, it's a, a man-made box and you're not always going to get perfection. But it's just the fact that this end here is lower than this end here and now I'm just talking for my own kind of perfection really at the end of the day the way that I like to do my photography you know I, I do like to have these things but I wouldn't expect you at this stage you know in your career to start getting these things um 100 percent correct you're gonna you're gonna have little oddities that are gonna happen it's when you start moving up to sort of like the msc uh level that you, you have to start looking at at these things so this is why this is why i'm saying that this is kind of like just a a draft sketchbook of images so it's not to actually take the images that you see what's wrong with them what the imperfections are and how maybe you can change them and do something do differently so that's what i'm doing here in this one here so this one okay this isn't actually on uh on my desk but like i say i was working with um a two meter uh range around my desk and these some are some flowers that my wife got off of one of my daughters for Mother's Day. So, you know, they was quite close to where, where my desk is. So I thought, well, yeah, I'm having a go at that. So this was uh, the repeating elements one. And when I first looked around my desk, I thought repeating elements is gonna be the one that I really struggle with because obviously, you know, we're talking about a natural kind of uh, occurrence. So that's what we're asking for in, in a repeating element. So it would have to be something which was created in nature and not created by man. So that's where I thought I was going to struggle. And so then again, I, I was having just having a look, I was trying to confine myself to make the task a little bit more difficult for me. And I'm going to expand on it as I as I go through the next few days and so on and see you know what is there in the house that you know i can photograph i can cover these themes uh with so that you know i can be more exploratory with the the photography and stuff like that i'm, I'm finding this really to be a good good exercise so yeah these are the flowers that my my daughter got for my my wife and what i first um liked was that curve there see the curve coming around really fascinated that one so what I did was, because I've cross-processed it, I've changed it, the colour within the, the images. This thing here is that 
white tile, that big industrial white tile that I, I have. And um, I got my daughter, my youngest daughter, who's doing her uh, master's in photography at uh, Trent Uni. She was holding it with a fingertip because this was, again, this is when window light here coming in. So we just had the tile standing upright so that then I could put it. And I, <coughs> if we had the tile like this, okay, this was the tile, right? My flower was back here, okay? So I had some distance between the flower and the tile. And the reason why i done that is because I didn't want the shadow falling onto this background. I wanted to keep that background as clean as possible. So I made sure I had some distance between the actual tile and the uh, the flower. So then when the light was hitting it, then no shadow would come because I got window light coming in from here, okay? So then what would happen would, the shadow would fall over here onto the back of the tile. So then there would be that dark shadow area. So that's why I brought the, the, the flower you know forward of the tile so that wouldn't happen and you can see uh, I, I just lit it from from this side okay using the window so that this side here would fall into the shadow so see how the petals there on that side are a lot darker than what they are on this side and when you use window light it's a really nice soft light and it works really well and so therefore we don't lose detail in the highlights as much as if you actually put artificial light in on it because artificial light can be quite harsh so I've just got window blinds here and that's that's all I used just opened up the window light blinds at an angle just to let the the light in through but you could use any kind of diffusing material to actually you know keep that keep that quite nice and soft right so that's my repeating elements one here. This one here is uh, I would put in for the uh, the shape um, image. Now this is uh, this is one of the uh, the new five pound uh, notes, and the very first one that I got I put in this frame really just as a as a bit of a a joke really. So it's uh, it's. It's kept, I've just kept it in that frame. So, yeah, so I've got all different shapes. I've got the um, the uh, rectangle. I was going to call it a square then. It's not a square, is it? But I've got the, uh, the rectangle or the frame. And then here, these are some, you know, old pound coins before uh, they got changed. So that's when they're, they're round. Now they've got the, uh, this, what, do, what do you call them? Are they hexagonal? I can't remember. Are they... Well, anyway, they've got the straight lines on them, haven't they? So these are the old one pound coins as well. So I kept those. And then I've got this watch, which was given to me on my uh, 50th birthday. And that that does just like kind of like hang, hang there. And I put it on for special occasions. I'll take it out for special occasion because, you know, I like... Um, I like the fob watches. I've got quite a few of the fob watches, but my son gave this one to me um, for my 50th birthday. So, yeah. So I like the shape there and the colour and what's going on. And then the, the shape there. So, you know, looking just for, you know, around where I was working, just for, for basic shapes and, uh, and things to photograph. So, again, those who know me or see me, I quite like my hats. I have different hats. So this would be my textured one, so the texture of the, the hat, and uh, I laid it onto the slate so I had a bit of empty space if I needed to. So that was my, my textured um, image. This one I would use for uh, the colour, but I was, uh, I was a bit drawn on, on the colour one here. After I took this, uh, this shot, and I put it in. I didn't realise how mucky that that book is. So, you know, I'd have to clean those those up again to do 
to do those properly to do it properly so but i was torn between that image right or the color and then using uh the uh the train i was gonna uh use that one for the the color one so yeah then i just chose to use the uh the book but yeah going back to the oh Going back to the yeah, I like the the different colours we've uh, we've got going on there. And again, it's you know it's things that I use every day. I use these books quite quite a lot. So yeah, so that's what uh, I don't know if anybody notices, but look, I've even got Jack Perks's book there as well. Okay, along with my Last Man Standing and my uh, Preacher book, along with my photography books. So, yeah. So then that takes me to this one here. Now I do. I, I'm quite keen on 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 this image here. I really like this one. This would be my uh, communication image. But again, after I photographed it, I noticed like all of the dust on top of the uh, the microphone. I deliberately took out the uh, the cable because I didn't want the cable pulling you out of the the image. So I did, deliberately took the cable out. But I'd make sure that I'd. Uh, clean that up so I like our pattern here I like our texture what's going on there but this would be the uh, for my communication because that's what I'm doing using sorry at the moment for my communication in a big way now rather than being standing in front of you I'm having to sit at my desk and speak into this microphone and do my communication there so that's my my communication so that's the the images that i've got so far so this would like i say was just um a rough sketchbook that i'm putting together so that would be my framing that you know am i going to use that for my uh my grouping i don't know i'm gonna have a, a look that's me uh me leading lines hang on a minute stay man stay man come here come here Sit down. I'm talking, right? Sorry, it's me dog. He's uh, having a wander around. Click, click, click all over the place. Yeah, so this was my leading lines. This one here is my grouping. This one here is uh, my pattern. Pattern, yes, definitely my pattern. <laughs> Repeating elements, uh, my shape, my texture, my colour. And then this one here is my communication. So there you go. I've got what have I got? I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm one short at the moment. So that's what I did uh, yesterday. I had a mess around with it yesterday, see where I could get. I'm going to have a, another mess around with it as well to see what else I can get in the house maybe you know definitely expand out from my desk area but you know just messing around um yesterday on and off off doing other bits and pieces this is what i, I came up with so you know it's not it's not as hard as i thought it was going to be but obviously i'm not in your situation i don't know what you've got but you know send send me images let me have a look at images you know uh on instagram and stuff like that let me have a look at, uh, at what you're what you're doing you don't have to set up the instagram account under your name so if you want to keep it totally anonymous you can do just make sure you you like you put a, a following on onto me so that you can tag me in and stuff like that and that's fine if you yeah you can always unfollow me at the end of the module you know if you don't want to carry on following me but yeah I like Instagram. It make Instagram makes it a lot more easier for me to just go through the the images. Sometimes I can do them when I'm just sitting on the set of, of an evening time. Sometimes I can do them whilst I'm having my breakfast. It just makes it a lot more easier rather than having to be at the computer, you know, opening up emails and stuff like that. So yeah. So let's keep the uh, the chat going, and uh, I'll be putting out some more. What have I done so far? Oh, I can't remember now. I can't. I've done negative space, didn't I? And I've done the leading line. So I'll go on to the next theme. 
and I'll put some more stuff out on the on Monday and Tuesday and stuff like that. And so you can we can just keep keep the ideas going, keep the ideas flowing, seeing where we are with everything else. So I'm going to sign off there. So take care, keep yourself well. Hope everything's going all right. And uh, let's look after one another. Thanks very much. Bye-bye for now. You're right now, Stan, man. You're sorted, aren't you? Good boy, ain't you?